I started at an early age uh, focused on what I wanted to do with my life. And did I think... You, did you go to college? I did. I went to, I went to Wesleyan. Uh, did you know when you were in college what you wanted to do? Yeah, I did, actually. I always knew I wanted to be in the entertainment business. And I think if you look at the factors that are most highly correlated with success in life, the one that really stands out is knowing what you want. Uh, I do think lots of other things matter, like working hard and persevering. I think a good education makes an enormous difference, and I was fortunate that I had one. The common thread, though, of highly successful people is knowing what they want and staying focused on it. Why was Vestron so successful? Vestron was an independent video company, I, I guess, started from nothing. How, how did it become so successful? Well, Vestron's success, uh, Vestron was founded by a man named Austin First at the, at the dawn of the video cassette revolution. It's hard to imagine today there was such a thing, but there was. And Austin's success was initially built on a deal he struck with Time Life Films, where he'd previously been employed. And he, he, he obtained the distribution rights for this new medium, video, for that catalog. And that generated a lot of revenue and profits. It allowed him to take the company public. And, um, and that gave him a capital base, and he diversified into film and television production from there. Uh, and then one of the company's first efforts into its more serious film program was um, what ended up being, at that point, the highest grossing independent picture of all time, Dirty Dancing. And that sort of sent the company on its way. Ultimately, though, the company wasn't successful. It, it ultimately declared bankruptcy. Uh, was it sounds like it was in the right space at the right time? Or what? It certainly, I mean, Austin certainly was in the right space by getting into video cassette distribution before anyone thought there was value there. Um, as a pure middleman, the, the business became compromised pretty quickly, which is why he diversified into production. What does that mean, compromise? Well, it's very difficult to make money simply buying and selling other people's rights. So he, he diversified into actual production and distribution. And then he would own the movies. And he'd own the movies at that point. And um, can you talk a bit about how Vestron sold those films? Uh, Pretty much the same way everyone else did. So the, the company had a worldwide marketing and distribution system across all media, theatrical, what in those days was video, today is home entertainment, and all forms of television. And it had offices uh, in the U.S. and in major territories outside of the U.S. And then in the territories where it wasn't represented, it made deals with local distributors. So it was pretty big. Well, quickly. It, was, it was very big very quickly, but again, a lot of that was driven by its initial success in its home entertainment catalog. Wait, what, what went wrong with Vestron, would you say? What, 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 what? Ultimately, the motion picture business is a pretty tough business, and, and Vestron was squarely in the motion picture production and distribution business, and that's a, a difficult business, number one, and a capital-intensive business, number two, and ultimately, I, this happened years after I left, but ultimately, uh, the company went bankrupt, and I think that was largely driven by the intersection of its results and its balance sheet. If you, if, let's say there's a young kid coming out of a, a good film school. Uh, what advice? He makes a movie, he makes his first movie. What, what, what do you, from where you are, which is pretty high up the food chain, what advice could you give that person about how, how he can derive some revenue, how he can sell his own damn movie? Well, the, to go on the festival circuit, if you can, uh, will get you some publicity. You, to go to a market, if you can, uh, may allow you to sell the rights. Uh, but I'd say the bottom line is to get into any festivals you can. And if you have to fly around and deliver a print yourself, you have to do that. Um, and go to as many um, markets or festivals, both domestically and internationally, as you can afford to go to. Go to the best ones you can, the ones where stuff trades, like at Sundance, where stuff actually trades, or American film market, or some of the overseas markets. Um, and if you show up at a market with a film and you have a screening, someone will show up. And if it's good, you'll get some word of mouth. So any, any opportunity to, to show the movie to people and get people to respond to it is a good thing. Do you think, though, that if the young filmmaker today cannot get a, a deal with a major, do you think that he, she, or it could just do it himself rather than go to a trauma or one of the smaller independents? There are plenty of people who do it themselves. Actually, making a picture yourself is, um, hundreds of movies are made every year in America that way and outside of America. Um, many of them never see the light of day. You still need to distribute the picture. And um, 
you're not going to get a lot of people to see it most likely if you just post it on YouTube. So, you know, the independent motion picture companies can provide investment capital and can also provide marketing and distribution services. Can you do it entirely on your own? Uh, I can't think of too many examples of success where um, an independent filmmaker has both uh, created and marketed and distribute, distributed a picture entirely by themselves. I'm sure there, you could find one, but I can't think of too many. It's much more typical than someone does something like the Blair Witch Project where it was self-financed and then it was sold to another enterprise and that company put more money into it and actually marketed it and distributed it and created a success. That's more typical. What the, the, the? An, an example of a low budget, high concept picture could be Toxic Avenger where as soon as you hear the title, you're already amused. You see the poster and you think it's gonna be funny and edgy and you go see it or you buy it at home or order it for pay-per-view. And that's a model that historically worked well. However, the model works best when what you're actually watching is high quality. So it's, it's purely a high concept picture with a great poster and a decent cast and uh, a great name. Um, probably isn't going to get you there today. You still need a motion picture someone wants to watch and finds interesting or compelling or scary or, or humorous. The motion picture business is a very, very tough business as a business. And people are in it because they love it and they find it compelling as a pure economic model. Very, very challenging business and it has been since the 1950s. Let's say somebody has his or her own company. How do you sell your own damn company? How do you sell your own company? Uh, you probably should hire a banker if you have a company you want to sell. Well, that's good advice. Yeah, I probably wouldn't try to sell my own company. So what, what does one do? One has a little, let's say one has a little company making chairs or something. What do you do? If well, it depends on the size of the company. I'm doing this as a little like a one-page sidebar. Just how to yeah. sell your if own it's company. a small business, you hire a, a so-called business broker. They're, you Google them in your vicinity, and they're in the business of selling small businesses. If it's a large company, you hire an investment banker. And the, typically, the scale of your company is, uh, depending on the scale of your company, depends on how famous the banker is. So if you have a $10 billion company, you hire Goldman Sachs or one of its competitors. And if you have a million-dollar company, you hire an individual business broker whose name you know, I probably wouldn't know. Now, let's say you have a uh, small company. Do you, pay, uh, do you pay a broker a fee up front, or do they take it on the cuff? It all depends. They'll at, typically ask for a small retainer up front, and then they'll take a percentage of the sale price, but it's negotiable. Would you advise the small company to go public? Let's say, uh, uh, I mean, Troma's never, we're never doing it, but uh, let's say a, a, a $5 million revenue company, would you, do you think that's a good idea to go public? Or? It's pretty hard to go public if you have $5 million in revenue. I mean, you're, you're talking about uh, not even really being listed on any exchange. Uh, generally speaking, you want to be of some scale and have repeatable profitability to be a public company. And there are a lot of regulations surrounding being a public company in America, particularly, uh, that make it complicated and expensive to be public. So it probably doesn't make sense to be public unless you're of some scale. Now, if you're a five million dollar technology company that needs access to capital, that has a business plan that suggests it can be of scale, you might take a company like that public. Uh, for example, a biotech company might go public on that basis. Do you have any final words of advice for the young person who wants to sell, who wants to be rich and famous? <laughs> well, being, selling and being rich and famous are not necessarily all the same thing. I mean, I, I think the advice I would give about success is try to really focus on the kind of life that you want and understand that it's tempting to think you can have it all. You probably can't. You have to make choices and, uh, and make sure that the things that you want are consistent with your skill set. So at the end of the day, make sure that what you're passionate about is also something that you're good at and make sure there's a commercial opportunity. And the, the, the bullseye among those three things, what you're passionate about, what you're really good at, and the business opportunity, that's the bullseye that you're trying to hit.